Okay, so here's a lesson for section 2.2, find the length of the line segment. Let's start off just by finding the length of this horizontal line segment here. So the line segment connecting um, endpoint A to endpoint B. To find the length of that line segment, because it's perfectly horizontal, it's nice and easy to do, we just have to count the units. It's one, two, three, four units long. Okay, now if all lines are perfectly horizontal and started and ended at perfectly even points, um, find the length of line segments would be no problem, okay? But what if we have a line segment that is like this, okay, it's diagonal. It's not perfectly horizontal, it's not perfectly vertical. In order to find the length of this line segment, we're going to have to come up with something new, okay? Um, what I want you to do is to try and brainstorm how you can determine the length of this line. You, you have all the skills necessary, okay? I'm just going to give you a little hint. You're going to need Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so what that tells you is the, the sum of the squares of the legs of a right angle triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, okay? So pause the video now, try and find out the length of this line, keeping in mind that you may need to use the diagram theorem. Okay, so pause it now. Okay, so now that you've thought about it for a bit, hopefully what you're able to come up with is if all we have to do, turn this, li turn this line segment into a right angle triangle, just like that. And then we can use Pythagorean theorem to um, come up with the length of this line. Keeping in mind the hypotenuse is always C, and the legs are A and B. Okay. Now, I don't. What we're trying to find is the length of C. Okay. Given these coordinates, we have two coordinates here. We have an x1, a y1, and an x2 and y2. Every point has an x and a y coordinate. Okay. Based on these coordinates, I can find the length of A and the length of B. The length of A, okay, this is the run here. And I know that the run is the difference in the x coordinates. Okay, so the difference in the x coordinates, it goes from 1 to 5 on the x axis. So the difference in the x coordinates, so I do x2 minus x1, that'll tell me the length of A. If I want to find the length of B, that's my rise. I know the rise of a line, okay, is the difference in the y coordinates, y2 minus y1. So it goes from 3 to 6 on the y axis, okay? So I can find the different I can find the length of b by calculating the rise, the difference in the y coordinates, okay? So I can find the length of um, a and of b and that will allow me to calculate c based on the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll plug in the values, okay? So A is equal to the run, we determine that, and that's equal to the difference in the x coordinates. So 5 minus 1 will give us 4. So the length of A is 4. B is the rise, so that's the difference in the y coordinates. 6 minus 3 is 3. So the length of B is 3. So all I have to do is sub in the values 4 and 3 in for A and B into the Pythagorean theorem and then solve for C. So what I get is 4 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. That gives me 16 plus 9 equals c squared, 25 equals c squared, and then remember the opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. So to get c by itself, I have to square root the 25. So root 25 equals c. Let's finish it off right here. Square root of 25 is 5. So C equals 5. Therefore, the length of AB is 5 units. <coughs> okay. So let's derive. So that, that's how we figure out the length uh, of this line segment. But we don't want to have to go through all of those steps every time actually turning it into a right angle triangle. Um, and then calculating the rise and the run, then plugging it into the formula. What we want to do is just come up with a, a generalized formula that will work for all, all line segments. Okay? But you ha we had to go through this so you saw how we were getting the formula. Okay? So let's make a generalized one. So if I've got a point A, so x1, y1, and a point B at x2, y2, those can be any coordinates. Okay? I know the length of A is the run, and that's the difference in the x coordinates. So that's x2 minus x1. 
I know the length of B is my rise, and that's the difference in the Y coordinates. So that's Y2 minus Y1. So just plug that in for A and B, and I get C squared is equal to A is X2 minus X1. I'm going to put that in brackets. Okay, whenever I plug something in, I put it in brackets. So squared. And then plus B, I know is Y2 minus Y1. Put it in brackets. So I know to square that whole thing. Squared. Okay. Now C is my so side C is the length of the line that we're looking at. We're looking at line A B. So I'm going to write that as A B. So A B squared is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So the length of AB squared is equal to the run squared plus the rise squared. Okay? Um, just, to, just to make the equation equal to exactly the length and not the length squared, I'm going to move this squared to the other side. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting. So my length of AB is equal to the square root of, I have to square root this whole thing, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And there's my length formula. So the length of any line, it doesn't have to be AB, it can be point C, D, E, F, Y, Z, anything, okay? So the length of any line, here's our length formula here is equal to the square root of the run squared plus the rise squared. Okay, that'll work for any line segment. So let's go ahead and practice that. So example one, I've got this line here, line A, B, negative 5, negative 2 to negative 3, 5. Now I want to find the length using the formula. Keep in mind, let's remember our length formula. My length of A, B is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So all I have to do to find the length of AB is to just plug in my values for x2, x1, y2, and y1, and then solve using my algebra skills. Okay? So I have my two points. Either one could be your first point, doesn't matter, and either one could be your second point. Just make sure each, you remember each point has an x and a y coordinate. So I'm going to choose A to be my first point. So here's my x1, y1, and this is my second point. So this is my x2, y2. Keep in mind, this one could be your x1, y1, and this one could be x2, y2. doesn't matter. Just as long as you remember, each one has an x and y coordinate. Okay? And the ones stay together, and the twos stay together. Okay? So all I have to do is plug in these values into my formula. So the length of AB is equal to x2 minus x1. So my x2 value is negative 3. Don't forget my brackets. So negative 3 minus negative 5. So x2 minus x1 is negative 3 minus negative 5 squared plus y2 minus y1, 5 minus negative 2. 5 minus negative 2 squared. Okay. So I've got a couple negatives beside, beside each other here. I know two negatives turn into a positive. So negative 3 plus 5 squared plus 5 minus negative 2 is the same as 5 plus 2 squared. Simplify further. I know um, Edmas tells me I do the brackets first. So because B stands for brackets, so I'm going to do the brackets. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. And 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the exponents. So I'm going to do 2 squared is 4 plus 7 squared is 49. Okay. I can simplify 4 plus 49 under this square root sign. That's 53. And as a decimal, I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. The square root of 53 is 7.3. Okay. So the length of AB is 7.3 units long. Okay. Perfect. Let's try another example. Example 2, find the length of the line with the endpoints AB. So this time we don't see a visual representation, but that's okay. We know the two endpoints. So choose either one to be your first point and the other one to be your second point. Um, I'll choose A to be my first point, x1, y1, and this is my second point, x2, y2. 
here's my length formula. Okay, the length of any line is equal to the square root of the run squared plus the rise squared. Okay, so all I have to do, plug in um, into my equation. So x2 is 4 minus negative 3. Okay, x2 minus negative 1. Or sorry, x2 minus x1 is 4 minus negative 3. Don't forget to square it. And then add the rise squared, 5 minus 1 squared. Okay, simplify. 4 minus negative 3 is equal to 4 plus 3, which is 7. I'm going to square that. 5 minus 1, I know that's 4. Keep going. 7 squared is 49. 4 squared is 16. Okay, so that gives me the square root of 65, which is equal to 8.1. Okay, so the length of that line is 8.1 units. Let's do another example here, okay? Let's do a, um, an application type of question. So a helicopter ambulance picks up a patient at this point, okay, at P96, 197. Those are the coordinates of where the patient is being picked up. The nearest hospital is that can provide treatment that the patient needs. Um, that the patient needs are in Timmins at this point, 200, 296, and at Sudbury, 230, Okay. To which hospital should the helicopter take the patient? Assuming we want the helicopter to take the patient to um, the closest hospital. Okay. So what this question is asking us is the distance from the patient to the hospital in Timmins shorter or longer than the distance from the patient to the hospital in Sudbury. So what we want to do, we go and compare the length of PS to PT. Okay, so the length from PS, we want to compare the length of PS to the length of PT. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to find the length of PS. So this is point P. I'll make this my x1, y1, and I want to find the length to, uh, to S. So I'll do my x2, y2. So the length of PS, plug that into my formula. I get the square root of x2 minus x1, so 232. Try and squeeze this in. 232 minus 96 squared plus 80 y2 minus y1 squared, so 80 minus 197 squared. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do the brackets first. So I'm going to get um, 136 squared. 232 minus 96 is 136. Plus, um, so now I'm going to do, oh, does this say, yeah, 80 minus 197. So 80 min minus 197 is negative 117 squared. Okay. 136 squared is 18,496. 18,496 plus negative 117 squared. Remember, any negative number squared becomes a positive number because a negative times a negative becomes a positive. And what negative 117 squared means? It means negative 117 times negative 117. Negative times a negative gives us a positive. Okay, so negative 117 squared is positive 13,689. 13,689. Okay, um, collect those like terms here under the radical sign, and we get 32,185. And take the square root of that, and we get 179.4 okay, units. I don't think the question tells us what units we're dealing with here. No, that's okay. But we know it's 179.4 units um, from the patient to the hospital in Sudbury. Okay. Now let's find the length from the patient to the hospital in Timmins. So Timmins, um, the coordinates for Timmins will now become my x2 and y2. Plug that into my formula. Okay. So x2 minus x, the square root of x2 minus x1 squared, so 200 minus 96. 200 minus 96 squared, and then add the rise squared, y2 minus y1 squared, 296 minus 197 squared. 
Okay, so I get the square root of 104 squared plus 99 squared. Okay, if I go ahead and square those numbers, I'm going to do my exponents next. I get 10,816 plus 99 squared, which is 9,801. Um, collect those like terms, add those constants, okay, under the square root, right, 20,617. Then go ahead and actually calculate that on my calculator, okay, and I will get 143.6. So the square root of 20,617 is 143.6. Now I've rounded that to the nearest tenth, okay. I've rounded both of these to the nearest tenth of the unit, okay. Um, so what we've noticed is the length to the hospital in Sudbury is longer than the length to the hospital in Timmins. So what we would do to answer this question, we would say the helicopter should take the patient to Timmins. Okay? So that's it for finding length. All you have to do is, is just use the length formula right here, okay? All you have to do is use the length formula and hopefully you understood how we derived this length formula by adapting Pythagorean's theorem, okay? We turn lines into right angle triangles, um, and we made up an equation that will give us the general length of a line, okay? If you have any questions, um, go to jensenmath.ca, um, go through the lesson, um, try the worksheets. Um, basically, all this lesson is, um, all you have to do for this section is be able to use this length equation. And like I said, hopefully you understood how we um, came up with that. Okay. Um, all right. That's it.